Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three of our Visit Mesa Annual Visitor Industry Summit. We're really glad that you're here. Today is all about updates from our staff. We have a great uh, lineup for you, including a panel with our sales team, updates from individual staff members, and a little bit of get to know you video in between. Uh, with that said, we would love your Q&A in the chat box, and we'll also answer questions at the end. Um, and we're going to be starting off with Michelle Streeter, who's our Chief Communications and Content Officer. So take it away, Michelle. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our Visit Mesa Annual Summit. My name is Michelle Streeter. I am the Chief Communications and Content Officer here at Visit Mesa. Those of you that joined us last year know that I really showcased how we do what we do in communications. And this year, I really want to share with you what we do in communications. We have so many new approaches to getting the word out about Mesa after our brief hiatus. And it's our goal to bring back travel writers and social media influencers and host them here in market. They're anxious and ready to come back. This year, we've already conducted media missions in both Los Angeles and Chicago, and we have some incredible interest and we'll be hosting clients as soon as this month. Like so many other travel organizations, we will make our return to New York City this coming January for the International Media Marketplace. It is the most important appointment-based trade show for our industry here in travel media. We're gonna be running two appointment schedules this year and we will be sharing all new storylines here from Mesa. We'll be promoting our downtown heavily and all the growth that is taking shape along Main Street. We will be introducing the travel trade media to the new Bell Bank Park powered by Legacy Sports. As Mesa's newest and largest visitor attraction, you will see us really step up our sports media outreach in the coming months and in the coming years ahead. Another new storyline we'll be sharing is related to autism travel and expanding that with accessibility and the incredible developments that Visit Mesa is already spearheading with the Mesa Regional Foundation for Accessibility, Diversity, and Inclusion. We are working on updating the Autism Travel Guide, expanding that to include all of our new programs, including the Hidden Disability Sunflower Initiative and the IRA Smartphone Service for our blind and low vision residents and visitors. Threshold 360 videos will be on its way too. In addition, we will be promoting our popular and expanded Fresh Foodie Trail, perhaps one of my most um, fun and popular programs to promote because it's all related to food. We are adding new stops to the trail this year. We will be adding new geocaches to the Fresh Foodie Trail Geo Tour. That was a program that we kicked off and I told you about last year. We have had more than 3,000 geocachers head out on the trail and find our treasures and collect our exclusive stickers. Visit Mesa is also partnering with Bandwango. They are experts in the destination experience industry. They develop passport programs, foodie trail programs, all managed by the convenience of your smartphone. Visit Mesa is planning to develop four themed programs immediately with Bandwango, promoting our collection of breweries here in downtown Main Street, our fresh foodie trail farms and culinary offerings, and our certified autism centers. And we will be extending the Bandwango service for our larger group fam tours and partnership mixers. It really is all about engagement. These passport and trail programs offer great ways to connect with our residents, connect with our visitors, and obviously support local businesses. And then we get to reward them for enjoying our destination. Our marketing team will also secure key insights on consumer behaviors from these folks that are using the app in our destination. We plan to expand on the For the Love of Mesa brand this year. During the pandemic, we formed that local steering committee that named it For the Love of Mesa. They showcased all their favorite things to see and do in a five-part video series that I'm proud to say we won a gold telly. That's an award for all those uh, folks that don't know what that is. This year, we plan to develop a local love tour based on our steering committee members' feedback. We will be showcasing our steering committee members in our visitor guide across our social media channels, and we keep showcasing the Mesa that they love by the locals for the locals. An extension of the For the Love of Mesa efforts is our new Meet Our Makers videos that we are featuring on our YouTube channel. It's being spearheaded by our brand ambassador, Zoe Schersel, who is meeting one-on-one -on -one with key figures here in Mesa and telling their story. From brewmasters to hoteliers to museum directors, this series is offering a behind the scenes look at some of Mesa's attractions and experiences, and it offers a richer storytelling. Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Schersel. I'm the brand ambassador for Visit Mesa. 
Welcome back to another episode of our series where we learn stories of local businesses and community members who make Mesa so amazing. So follow me while we go meet our makers for the love of Mesa. We encourage all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest in this series. And if you wanna be part of Meet Our Makers, just send us an email and let us know. We would love to head down to your business and showcase what you have to offer. And we can't forget about TikTok. As you know, TikTok is taking the social media world by storm and we are making sure that we are storytelling through that video on that platform as well. We are doing this by partnering with some of the best local content creators who are sharing their lens of Mesa with their viewers. Last year alone, our TikTok partnerships tracked more than 2 million unique impressions on TikTok. That's quite impressive, actually, for our first time ex exploring that platform. You're going to see our team out and about all across Mesa City Limitless this year. We have a set goal to bring more than 50 clients to market on assignment, not just to Mesa, but also to our surrounding region. Next spring, our communications team will be leading another blogger fam tour up and down Main Street, just like we did last April. We plan to show off the brand new ASU Mesa City Center campus and all those new developments in downtown Mesa that will be open at that time. We're really excited. The best way to follow up with everything that we are doing is to follow us on social media. Follow our Facebook, follow our Instagram, our Twitter, our Pinterest. Go to visitmesa.com. We have a blog where we are weekly sharing content and all that our partners are sharing with us. And that's how you can stay up to speed with Visit Mesa this year. Really looking forward to an incredible, incredible, incredible story to share. Thank you. So it's time to get to know the Visit Mesa staff just a little bit better. And I have Diva with me to get us started. Um, so Diva, what's your favorite dessert? If I have to pick one besides brownies and cookies, it's gonna be French macaroons. And that's because they are so delicate and sweet and each one is different. Well, in your family, right? I, yep, I have a French background, so that's probably where it comes from. Oh my gosh, you're making me want one like right now, but I am going to not. Um, so I have a would you rather question. Okay. Okay. So would you rather eat the oldest thing in the office fridge or clean the office bathroom with just toilet paper? Ooh. I think I'm going to go with the bathroom. I think I'm going to clean the bathroom. <laughs> All right, so Mark, we're going to need a little extra um, budget for some TP because I know it's going to require a lot. All right, thanks, Diva. Hi, Kim. Hi, Zoe. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. I have a question for you. So what is one item that you have on your bucket list? Okay, so one item that I have on my bucket list would be to travel to Svalbard, which is this small remote island in Norway, um, and go see the Northern Lights. And the reason I came up with this bucket list item, so to speak, would be because I started following um, this girl on TikTok that lives there. And so just seeing like her videos of just the snow and like the lights and just her life up there, it's just so crazy to me that something that remote exists and when we live in somewhere that's just so populated. So that would definitely be number one on my bucket list. Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. All right, I have a really funny, uh, would you rather, okay. ready? Okay. <laughs> Would you rather have to eat broccoli for the rest of your life or be forced to watch an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians every day for the rest of your life? That's hard because I actually do like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but like I wouldn't mind eating broccoli every day. So I'd probably say let's just do broccoli because, you know, at least it's healthy and I'm getting something out of it. Yeah, that sounds good. And you don't have to watch the Kardashians for the rest of your life. Yeah, so. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Hello, Julie. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So it's my turn to ask you a question. Okay, I'm ready. What is your dream vacation spot? Dream vacation. I would have to say Italy. Hands down, Italy. I want to go to Italy um, to see the beautiful coastlines, um, the beautiful architecture, uh, just walking through the, the old historic roads. I'm a huge Da Vinci Code fan, so I want to go everywhere that was in that book. 
I want to explore everything. I want to experience it. I want to uh, go to all the wonderful uh, restaurants. I'm Italian, so I want pizza. I want pasta. I want it all. I'm going to go all and uh, travel all through Italy and all the great cuisine. Um, but the most important reason why I'd want to go is because I want to visit um, where my ancestors came from. I want to travel northern and southern Italy and just uh, see where they lived and where I came from. You haven't thought about this at all. No, not at all. No, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. I think we need to start yeah. a GoFundMe and get Julie to Italy. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Let's yeah. get the Venmo going. Yeah, I want to go in your <laughs> luggage, please. That sounds like an awesome vacation, yeah. especially since we're all in travel. Yeah. Um, it's my turn to also ask you a would you rather question. Okay. Okay, so would you rather be a roadie for Metallica or Backstreet Boys? <laughs> this is so my question. Hands down, Number one would be Metallica. I'm an 80s girl. I'm an 80s hair band girl. Uh, my favorite band is Def Leppard. So the Metallica, oh my gosh, I love Metallica. So I would absolutely love to be a roadie. So we need to get Def Leppard with Metallica on the same concert tour. Uh, and after you would COVID. just be in Please, heaven. after COVID. I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready for the trip. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. Hi, I'm Allison Brooks, Director of Destination Experience and Advocacy for our Visit Mesa. In my role, I oversee partnerships, our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, and help tell the story of what Visit Mesa does to make Mesa a better place to live and visit. I've been with Visit Mesa for about nine months and have loved every moment of it, even when I lose and name that tune every single time. Favorite part of my job is how I get to make a difference in people's lives. Whether it's making our partners achieve more in their marketing goals, adding new technologies for disabled visitors to have a better experience in Mesa, or welcoming all people to discover City Limitless just the way they are. I'm excited about a few things coming up in 2022. First, we will be reimagining the partnership program. Diva and I have been hard at work getting feedback from as many partners as possible over the past few months. With that input, we will be updating our partner program to be more tailored to our individual partners' needs. We also want to improve upon our communication and reach out to partners as often as we can just to check in and see how things are going. And we hope that our partners will reach out to more often to us too. Whether they have ideas, concerns, or questions, we want to be your allies. Second, I'm excited to continue building upon our mission to be the most accessible city in the United States. We already have done so much work in this space, as you know. We are proud to be the first autism certified city in America, the first city to adopt the Hidden Disability Sunflower Program, and just a few weeks ago, one of the first cities to adopt IRA. For those of you that don't know, IRA is a brand new technology that allows people who are blind or with low vision to be connected to a visual interpreter through an app on their smartphone. This allows for any individual to gain independence as they go through our city whether it to be helped with reading a menu at Worth Takeaway, finding directions to Doubletree, or just figuring out where the water fountain is at the convention center. IRA is now unlimited and free of charge in the Mesa boundaries. But we are not done yet. To continue our mission, we will be hard at work looking for more technologies and services to bring our visitors and residents. I'm excited to announce that starting next year, we will have 360 degree virtual tours of many of our hotels, restaurants, and attractions on our website so that people can plan before they go. And this is especially significant for people with disabilities, helping ease concerns of what to expect when they arrive. Finally, I'm so thrilled about our brand new foundation, Mesa Regional Foundation for Accessibility, Diversity, and Inclusion, which is all about showing both residents and visitors to Mesa the limitless possibilities in our city and in their own lives. Our signature program will be for underserved high school students to introduce them to opportunities in the tourism and hospitality industry as a career path. This year-long program will be hands-on learning for the entire school year with hopes that many of these students will continue their education through scholarships and internships and build a pipeline of talent for our hospitality community. We will also be working with ASU Downtown Mesa, the City of Mesa, and Arizona Autism United on a summer camp and eventually longer programs for autistic children and teens, offering gaming, coding, digital technology, and virtual reality curriculums paired with peer engagement and mentoring. We know this type of program can open doors for kids on the spectrum in many ways, 
and also builds upon our shared value of being as inclusive as possible in Mesa. Finally, the foundation will actively raise funds in order to add more technologies and services to enhance the experience throughout our city for disabled residents and visitors alike. One of these initiatives that we're looking at is Good Maps, which is a smartphone app that provides highly accurate audio directions for anyone as they explore a space, which is particularly useful for those who are blind and even first responders. Another is the A-Linker, which is a three-wheeled, self-propelled walking bike designed for people of all ages who have mobility challenges. We envision supplying these bikes to our key partners for residents and visitors to borrow as they explore their, our downtown areas and other attractions. With so many exciting things on the horizon, I'd like to give a huge thank you for the continued support of our city leadership, board members, partners, and residents. The vision of Visit Mesa is to promote the value and vitality of our visitor economy to create a better community. And we couldn't do it without all of you. So thank you. Good morning, Jazeera. Good morning, guys. What is your favorite class in school? Mm -hmm. My favorite class in school was art class. I had an amazing art teacher who took his time, believed in me, and uh, he was with me till 12th grade. And we took part in so many different competitions, and he would encourage me, and we would like send my artwork to all over the world, actually. And uh, because of his supervision and guidance, my artwork was featured in a couple of shows too. Would you rather go without shampoo or toothpaste for the rest of your life? Oh God. You know, uh, if you did not know about this, curly hair people don't need to wash their hair with shampoo. I didn't you know that. You just need conditioner. <laughs> you can do co-wash, so you have options. So I have a question for you. Um, what was the worst job you ever had? Um, I think probably the worst job I ever had was working in cosmetics. But what was most difficult about the job was I was newly married and I had a staff of seven women that were all beautiful and didn't work on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. So I had to work every single weekend because they had a place to be. And so I made more money than they did, which made them upset, but it was stalking and, and actually managing eight beautiful women was a challenge. All right, now I got a second question. Uh, would you rather be a high school teacher or a circus clown? Oh my goodness, the irony. Um, I was supposed to be a teacher and um, what happened to me is when I was student teaching, when I was at university, I realized that there's a roundabout answer to this, but I realized that I didn't have the patience for the non-sparklers in the class. You know how you're, you're in a situation and there's bright bulbs and there's dull bulbs, and I didn't have it in me to cater to the dull bulbs. And so I pulled away from teaching and I would love to be a clown. So, you know, on both ends. I would love to be a clown. I have, I think that would be a blast. Well, thank you very much for your Sure, time. my pleasure. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Piva. What is your most used phone app? 
my most used phone app, I feel like I have a couple different ones. So for work, I use Instagram because I run all of Visa Mesa's Instagram accounts. And I also use my Outlook every single day, whether it's weekday, you know, a weekend, I always check my Outlook. And then on a personal side, I am always doing my daily crosswords in the morning. Like awesome. the, before or after work, I always like to do my crosswords. And then I also use Facebook just to keep in touch with my family that's back in Wisconsin and love talking to them, messaging them. And they also post the most awful, embarrassing photos on there. So oh, that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> those are probably my. Would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? Covered in fur or covered in scales? Yeah. Um, probably fur because I am so cold no matter where I go. I know when I'm in the office, I have my little weighted blanket that I wear 24 seven. So I would probably choose fur. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Hi, Michelle. How's it going? Hi. It's good. How are you? Good. I have some questions for you. Okay. What is your go-to karaoke anthem? Well, it's been about 20 years since I sang it, but when I was at ASU, my go-to song was Van Morrison's Brown Eyed Girl, hence the brown eyes. Um, I was always jealous of people with blue eyes, but until the boys started singing Brown Eyed Girl with me in college. Good to know. Yeah. Okay, and I have a would you rather question. All right. Would you rather speak to animals or speak 10 foreign languages? Oh, speak to animals, because I already do that. I am an expert. I have four dogs, and you know, because you follow them on Instagram. I do. Um, yeah, no, speak to animals, no question. Fair no enough. Question. I think I, I honestly think I'd have to agree. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Kate. How are Hi, you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I was just saying, I think we both did the hair, yeah, same the hair curl. thing going on mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have a Mesh. question for you. Yes. Okay. Can't wait to answer it. I know. Um, so what was your favorite TV show as a kid? Um, okay. So I loved Sabrina the Teenage Witch so much um, that we actually got a cat, a black cat, named it Salem. Um, and so obviously he did not talk. It was very upsetting for me. Um, was really hoping just to have, you know, a, a magical cat. But then um, in the show, they always go to like the, I think it's like the linen closet that they, it like opens up to a new world. So that was really like stuck home with me. And I was always trying to like go into our linen closet, going into maybe the laundry room, something, trying to find, you know, a new world, but it never happened. But I did love Sabrina the Teenage Witch a lot. Well, now I know where to find you in the linen <laughs> Just like closet. Just linen closet when, looking for us. Yeah, in our new offices. I, there might be a linen closet. Yes. You'll be in your own little magical world. Yes. Okay. Hopefully. I have one more question. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, would you rather have to watch the musical version of Cats every day for the rest of your life or have to try out for The Voice? Oh, God. Awful. Um, definitely not The Voice. I will. No one will ever hear me sing, um, and I promise you that. So I guess I will have to watch cats. I will not enjoy it. I will be very upset about it, but I would probably do that over um, watching or going to uh, audition for The Voice. I also don't want to embarrass myself in front of, um, what's his name from Room 5? Oh, Adam. Adam. Yeah. I don't want to embarrass myself yeah. in front of him or John Legend. Yeah. So no, I would uh, definitely stick to just watching. I heard, a, yeah. I heard Lance is trying out for The Voice next week. I know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go uh, vote for him. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. Nice chatting with you. Hi, my name is Diva Tolosa and I am the Destination Experience Manager here at Visit Mesa. I focus on managing Visit Mesa's partnership program, building and cultivating partner relationships, and generating partnership sales. I've been with Visit Mesa for just over two months and truly enjoy working with our partners. I love talking to people, getting to know them, and their businesses. We support our partners with industry knowledge and research while expanding their reach to a greater audience. This is what makes what we do so special. We get to help people grow their business, tell their story, and support their success. The city of Mesa is growing with many new local businesses, and this is an exciting time. I'm excited to see the development and be a part of the process. Hi, Lance. Hi, Kimberly. How are you doing this morning? I'm fantastic. How are okay. you? Your question for today is, 
what reality show would you want to be on? Oh, reality TV is like one of the TV genres I do not watch. Um, that tells us something right there. Would, okay. So I'm supposed to tell you The Bachelor, uh, but that's not at all the, the truth. <laughs> that was my recommendation. <laughs> um, I would absolutely be on Survivor. Yeah. Uh, I would not survive, but that's the show that I would be on. Why? I, I hunt, I fish, um, I'm outdoorsman. I would think I would like to fancy that I could survive it. Uh, I would absolutely be the first person kicked off. Uh, <laughs> make a fire couldn't do it um where's my ladder <laughs> where's you know where's my knife where's my gun there's none of that there so i know that i wouldn't survive but that would be absolutely the show that i would attempt to try my hand on here's your stump, stump the dj question uh oh okay would you rather talk like yoda <sighs> or breathe like darth vader for the rest <laughs> of your life i couldn't talk backwards like yoda i feel like that would mess with me trying to to sell to people um but breathing like I was on a ventilator, like Darth Vader also. Um, but I'm imposing, so I would, I would say breathe like Darth Vader. Oh, okay, good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly. Appreciate it. Hi, Allison, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. It's my turn to ask you a question. Okay, okay. go for it. If you could play an Olympic sport, what would it be? Um, it would have to be ping pong because, well, I have to get better at it because, well, some of you don't know this, but David and I frequently will play ping pong and he beats me like 21 to two. So clearly I need to get better at it. And so that the only sole reason I'm choosing this is so that I can officially beat David someday. That's like, that's my dream. So that would be my Olympic sport. Oh, so it's you guys are the ones who are fighting it out yes. in the, in the yes. back room there. Wow. Yes. Okay. And he's very proud of himself for how, yes. how badly he beats me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish you luck next time. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a would you rather question. Okay. Okay. Would you rather live 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future? I'm 100 years in the past without a doubt because I would like to just give up my cell phone for five minutes. Like, seriously, <laughs> I just want to go back to when times were just a little bit more simple. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I, I would agree. What yeah. would you? Yeah. Oh, boy. I think I would go in the past. Yeah. I think I would go in the past. I do want to retrace maybe my family's footsteps and, 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 and that, but um, more simple times, I guess. Yeah. 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 So 100 years in the past. Yeah, for sure. David, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks for asking, Kate. How are you doing? I'm great. Just, you know, excited to be here. Excited to be asking you some, some questions. So looking um, forward to it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So I just want, I really want to know, everyone's been asking, um, so what food would you never eat? <laughs> I feel like I'm being uh, set up uh, at, you know, if you've worked with me and visit Mesa, you know that I love my, <laughs> love my stomach. Uh, I love to eat. Uh, if there's any leftover in the kitchen, uh, typically people come to me and uh, tell me first and then there'll be no leftover from there on. Uh, so I feel like I'm being uh, set up a little bit here. Uh, I remember the first time I went to uh, kindergarten, my dad dropped me off. I uh, must have been four years old, I think. Uh, and I grew up in Hungary, so kindergarten starts a little bit different age. Uh, but he dropped me off. That was the first time being away from home, being away from my mom. Uh, and so I hit under a table and they served yellow peas. Uh, that's a vivid memory and I, I to date I still can eat uh, yellow peas uh, It's probably because I'm there's, there's a scar that just you know uh, that yellow peas just left uh, so that would be probably one food that I, I would I don't say I wouldn't eat it, but I would if there were options I would probably stay away from it and then um, Okay, one one more question for you. Okay. Uh, sure. Would you rather be on a 12-hour flight? Uh, between two arguing passengers or sit next to a screaming infant? I've done it both. Uh, so <laughs> to me, you know, I, like I said, I grew up in Hungary, so I fly back and forth every summer. Uh, it takes about door to door about 16 hours, 17 hours if I catch my connections. Uh, I'll probably take the baby because uh, really? at some point, you know, it becomes soothing, I think, because uh, you just keep screaming or she just keeps screaming and you just tune it out. White noise, yeah. And it helps you fall asleep. Well, I was a five year old, so yeah. that I was trained in screaming. So I think right. that maybe that has something to tune do with it. it. Out. Yeah. Perfect. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, thanks, dude. Thank you. Yeah. I have a very interesting question for you. Okay. If you weren't CEO of Visit Mesa, what position 
would you be and why? If I weren't CEO of Visit Mesa, what would I be and why? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, you know, when I was in college, I had it in my mind that I would go to law school and become a sports agent. And I applied to law school, got accepted to law school. But at the time, I felt I was kind of burnt out, wanted to take a year off. Don't ever take the time off. Don't advise your kids, don't take the time off because you, you often don't go back. Um, so that's what I would do if I weren't in this business. If I were in this business, if I remained in this business, I think I would be a tourism lobbyist. Mm. So still, so you see, I got the regrets of not going to law school. Uh, probably would have uh, gotten a law degree and then became a, a professional lobbyist representing this industry. As many of our staff members know, I'm passionate about our industry. Yeah. I'm passionate about the jobs in our industry. Uh, and I think we need to continue fighting for it and make sure people understand the true value and importance of the visitor economy. Oh, I can see you're doing that. Absolutely. So now my second question for you. A second question. Uh-huh. This is actually a very good one. Would you rather send your music of the day to every resident in Mesa or play Name That Tune every day of the week? I would love to play Name That Tune every day of the week. Staff knows I love to play that game in the office. Yeah. They don't let me play it as much as I want to play it. I'd love to play it every day, and I would love to play it with every resident and see you know, how much people know about uh, music and artists and its origins. And, um, and you know, I love funk and soul and classic R&B and Motown. Um, you know, those, that really good music is missing, so I love playing it and okay. love, love hearing people um, take it in, right, and see how it impacts them. Wonderful. Good morning, Allison. I'm David Kolozar, Director of uh, National Sales. Uh, my job is to represent our Mesa hotels for uh, corporate groups and association meetings. Um, my daily life, I, uh, I have fun with, uh, with my team, uh, with Kimberly uh, and Lance. Uh, of course, you know, lately I've been a lot of uh, business development, calling on uh, past accounts and uh, utilizing our resources to uh, reach out to new groups and then start to uh, revive the uh, meeting industry uh, and the in-person uh, corporate meetings and of course association meetings. Okay, thank you. Kimberly? Hi, I'm Kimberly Forrest and I am the Senior Vice President of um, Visitor Marketing um, and it's my pleasure really to fill the spot that's really necessary at this point coming back out of COVID to actually do consumer direct outreach um, through different marketing channels. Um, we're also in the, in the process of, of discovering new ways to track our business so that we can target market a little bit better than we've been doing in the past. Um, I've been with the company for nine years and I'm thrilled to see where we've come and how far we've come as a team. Um, work is definitely a pleasure and that's what's the most important about our company, I think. So, thrilled to be here. Very nice. Thank We're you. thrilled to have you. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Lance. <laughs> My name is Lance. I'm the director of sports. Um, long story short, I'm here to represent Mesa as the go-to destination for youth, professional, um, and collegiate, any type of sports. Um, you know, had I had I known then what I know now, just in the eight months that I've been here, I uh, had no idea what Mesa had to offer till I was starting to learn about it. Um, and we have, you know, Olympic style aquatic centers. We have 50 plus fields uh, and a, a giant sports facility being built now, which I'll talk about later. So Mesa's moving and grooving and I'm, I'm here to represent it as the best, uh, best destination for sports. Thank you. Um, so you're all responsible in different ways for the success of selling our destination. Um, and I think that we, uh, to do that, we've all had to deal with a lot of change. Would you not agree? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just over that last COVID stuff. Um, so in fact, change could probably be the theme of this whole conversation. Um, so I'll start with you, Kimberly. Um, so how have you and your clients changed the way that you do business, both domestically and overseas? I think that, I just wanna add, it's funny that you say that, you know, the, the word will be change instead of COVID. And it's a new C word. Yeah. You know, and it is change. And I think that everyone has really had to pivot 
um, in a good way. Um, my clients are now doing um, you know, more direct communications with consumers. Um, I have one main client that um, used to be a overseas, 80% of their business was overseas, 20% was domestic, and they actually had the AAA account. Um, now their business has completely flopped, where they are doing 80% domestic and then 20% overseas, which is a huge change when you look at the totally different cultural, you know, um, issues, you know, between how they're communicating with their clients. Um, we are changing um, how we're reaching out in that we're putting 90% um, of our marketing funds into um, domestic, um, to reaching to the consumers directly. Um, it's interesting because we used to market to people what we wanted to market to people. We're now marketing to people what they want to see, and we're marketing to them based on what they are looking for. And uh, so we've changed things digitally. Um, we're also doing some print advertising um, that we haven't done in the past that will extend for another couple of years to communicate direct with the consumer. Um, so it's, we're definitely changing, but we're going back into the overseas market. Um, we have a very, very strategic plan to um, introduce media overseas and also work with tour operators um, overseas, and that will be in the spring of 2022 knowing that based on all of the data that we're getting, um, the Brits are coming back first. So we're going to the UK. Um, we just got the latest data and they, in 2023, they'll only be down 13% over 2019. So in 2023, we have to be ahead of that curve and we have to start marketing in 2022. So in our world, we work 18 months out. So we're already planning for 2023. One more thing I'll say is that we anticipated the overseas market wouldn't come back until 2025, but what was incorporated in that information was the Asian market. If you pull out the Asian market, then you've got a totally different landscape of tourism that's coming into the United States. So that's how we're changing and that's how the world's changing. And I'm excited about how Kate and I are being able to pull out so much data and be able to help you make some of those decisions. It's so unbelievable. It's and you I'll get to that when you ask me my <laughs> other questions. I'll ask right. you that. I'll, I'll answer that. Um, so, David, I know things have definitely changed in your world for national sales. Um, so tell us about, how, um, about that and how the corporate and group meeting segment will continue to recover in 2022 and beyond. Yeah, so yeah, things have definitely changed. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, right around March 2020, uh, the ball dropped uh, and, and corporate events and association meetings uh, all of a sudden came to a complete halt. Uh, fast forward 18 months, uh, now we are seeing some of those uh, cancellations that we helped uh, rebook and move into lift and shift, so to speak, move into 2021, actualizing uh, this past month and a half we had groups almost on a weekly basis uh, that actually did meet in person. Uh, there were some hybrid uh, aspect to them, and I think hybrid is here to stay. Um, so as far as our sales efforts and our marketing efforts, we're trying to put emphasis on uh, prospecting for new accounts. Uh, we were using a Mint, which is one of our uh, databases that is a co-op. Uh, 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 almost all of the DMOs report to this uh, database and it helps us to find new groups, groups that are meeting. Uh, there is also an AI aspect to it, uh, which actually intuitively uh, suggests you groups. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit easier on, on a, a one-man sales operation to uh, look for groups that would be a good fit for Mesa. We are uh, heavily promoting our, uh, our incentive, uh, which helps uh, once Corporations are coming back to the table, which they are to a certain degree. They're now meeting uh, in our destination and in the greater Phoenix area. Uh, but a lot of those, a lot of their, um, their meeting uh, budgets were shifted away because they had to pivot. Uh, pivot, I think, is another word that uh, we uh, often use uh, since we've been in the, in the pandemic for the past 18 months. So it's P and then two C's. Yeah, right, yeah, pandemic uh, to pivot. <laughs> yeah, pivot sounds much <laughs> more P's, uh, yeah. calculated than <laughs> scramble and panic. <laughs> I, I just probably call it scramble and panic in you know, some, <laughs> some uh, instances. But what I was trying to say is that our, uh, our incentive funds are readily available uh, to help corporations to come back to the table. And uh, we're actively working with uh, our hotel partners too, so they know that what's available to them, so they can have those educated conversations with the clients. 
uh, just to make sure that we overcome any budgetary restrictions or any any hesitation on, on the corporate uh, planner side. Uh, we're also going back to, we've been back in uh, in-person events. Uh, we have done three shows this, this year uh, to date. And uh, I'm happy to excited uh, to announce that we're going to go to our uh, MCA Emerge in February. Uh, we're working with two of our hotel partners uh, to bring them to this uh, fate-based trade show. And we're going to have a booth uh, represented. And then also in the spring of 2022, we're going into small market meetings, uh, which is a niche for, for us, for Mesa. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to uh, make some good relationships and then bring some new accounts so we can replace uh, the accounts that we have lost uh, and also help the recovery uh, for the in-person meeting industry. Wow, lots of change. Lots of no changes, doubt. yes. Um, I, kn I do know one thing I want to change is no more Zoom meetings. Please, God, no <laughs> yeah. more Zoom meetings. Agreed. I was just at a in-person meeting and it's everything. I well, it's yeah, we need the in-person meetings back, and we need them back quick, and I bet there's going to be a tidal wave when everybody is probably coming to the same decision. It's funny to say that because there are some certain market segments uh, where you have to have continuing education, and the planners are not seeing the in-person numbers. They still have to, again, pivot back to the hybrid version. So there is some aspect that I think it's here to stay. Um, there are certain individuals that prefer just to walk out of their uh, living room and, you know, uh, jump on a Zoom and yeah. then get their you know, continuing education credit uh, versus having to travel. So uh, there are some outside forces to uh, recent cancellations of airlines because of uh, staffing issues. So there's a lot of variables that go in there uh, that perhaps could delay the full recovery, uh, which industry experts say that it's not going to happen until 2024. Uh, we're hoping that they're wrong and then uh, we're going to recover a little bit faster. Uh, but regardless, we're here to uh, support our hotel partners and reach out to planners and make sure that we put our best foot forward uh, so Mesa is ready when uh, they are ready to come back and meet in person. For sure. All right, well, Lance, I, I wanted to ask you about a little change because I heard rumors about this tiny little sports park coming to uh, a... <laughs> tiny. Just really small. I don't, um, about yeah. 32 acres. Can we talk about something else? That's uh, not really I important. Like that's all we hear about. No, now. I, I um, want to talk about it. It's I like know. It's like that big present in the corner of the room that's behind the Christmas tree that you <laughs> see and you see it and you want to open it. You oh. have seen it there for months. Yes. I already opened it. Uh, you did, um, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, so Lance, first tell us a little bit about Bell Bank Park um, and then about how you plan to tackle that whole thing because it's a monster. Yeah, it is a, a monster. Good monster. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's going to revolutionize sports at, at every level. It's one of the, it's, it's a first of its kind. It's, it'll be the largest uh, in the United States. The ability of what Bell Bank Park is going to be able to house and we're the lucky recipients in Mesa to be able to have it in our backyard. Um, it just shows you how much Mesa has grown from all markets, uh, you know, our downtown district, our hotel supplies increasing. So uh, to say that Mesa earned this is not an understatement um, and we're happy and we're proud of it, you know. So, you know, being able to represent Mesa and everything it has to offer and you have this giant, brilliant, you know, coming soon to you kind of in your face, uh, Bell Bank Park is so exciting. It is a whole other undertaking in itself. Uh, no marketing plan has ever been, you know, th there's nothing, you can't compare it to anything because it's the first of its kind. Well, does it even need marketing? That's right. That's the question and, we and face. That's, <laughs> and that's brilliant. You know, if you build it, they will come mm -hmm. to a point. Mm -hmm. Of course, people are going to come, you know, in droves from all around the world to, to this place. But like I said in my intro, it's, it's, we're here to paint Mesa as the overall destination, not just this this one park, this one field, this one hotel. Mesa, in general, is the destination that has earned this, and we represent it. So, m m are, you know, to tackle this, our whole idea was to be integrated, as integrated as possible. Their story, we want to tell it. Our story, they want to tell it. What. You know, what do they want at their park? What do we want in Mesa? Um, what do our what's our, what do our community want to see? What do they want to see in their leagues? What do they want to see? Do they want professional sports and more of it? Do they want, you know, the Olympic style sports and more of that? Do we want to see, you know, obviously it comes down to, you know, dollar bills in Mesa. Is it, it what, what is tourism bringing in? But what is it doing for the community um, to be able to drive three miles down the road and go see an Olympic style event? That, that's unheard of in Mesa, you, you know, drive you know, 10 miles from, you know, Chandler Gilbert area to come to Mesa and watch professional sand volleyball. I mean, that's, that's something you would have to go to LA and, and Miami to go watch and we get that in Mesa. Uh, so I'm excited and integration has absolutely been my plan. Everything they want, we're representing it that way. Everything we want 
it's it, it goes back and forth. Um, I'm hands on with calls with their housing agency. Uh, every two weeks we get on a call, you know, how are the hotels responding? And then I get to talk to our hotels, what they feel about it, what their pain points are, what, what they're struggling with, what they're frustrated with. Because, you know, something of this kind, the supply, there is no such thing as a supply that's perfect for that demand. And Mesa will absolutely fill to its brim before it spills out into the greater Phoenix area, and we know that. So it's, it's how do we navigate through what they've always done, the greasy wheel that's always been moving at that hotel and in the city, to this bright new shiny toy that nobody knows how to prepare for. I'm over communicating to hopefully prepare them the best. And that's been, um, we've been getting a lot of just rave reviews of how, how, you know, every two weeks it's a call. How are the RFPs going? How are the rooms filling? How are the hotels filling? I go back to the hotels. How's your communication? You know, are, are, you know, re are teams registering? Are you getting calls about it? And it's, it's, it's a beautiful picture that's starting to be painted and we can't wait till January. Well, for those of you that don't know, Bell Bank Park is going to be three times the size of Disneyland. Um, what are some of the other numbers you I can share with us? Of, yeah, what kind of room night, what kind of production are you looking yeah. at? What kind of numbers um, are out there? Are there any and, you know, out and, the, there? and the numbers are the most, you know, um, accurately inaccurate. It's, it's one of those things, again, nobody knows how to prepare for it. I mean, it's slated to bring in 10 million visitors throughout one single fiscal year. Um, it's one of those things that even already, you know, on the books has 65,000 and growing room nights into the Mesa area. That's it's an unheard of demand driver. Um, you know everything from 67 indoor volleyball courts, 67 indoor volleyball courts. You know 24 turfed fields with an option for 11 more, you know grass fields. It's uh, you know, pickleball uh, is booming in America, and they have a house for the largest pickleball uh, national tournaments in the USA Olympic bodies. You know being hosted there. It's it's unheard of. It's un it'll never be. You know, as much as we think that we would love another one like it, we're so excited to be the first one. We love. This is the first time that we're excited to be a guinea pig for something like this. It's going to jumpstart our our hotel industry too because we don't right. have right now. We don't have the inventory, so uh, we're hoping that we're going to see some uh, full service hotels coming online uh, and helping to provide room nights that are desperately needed in Mesa. So. And it's year round. It's one of those things where, you know, Arizona a, a, at large was a, a Q1, uh, January, February, March, miserable during the summers because, you know, it's 110, 120 degrees. This has the ability to fill our hotels year round. It never stops. It has so much indoor space and so much potential for e-gaming. Uh, I mean, that's, that's booming. The indoor courts, the basketball, futsal, volleyball, there's so much indoor possibilities we're going to be full year round. It, it won't be, there won't be that dead time. Um, and then to, you know, to your market, it's not just sports right. and to your market, it's not just sports, it's conventions, associations, it's, you know, concert venue. It, it has an outdoor amphitheater, it has a 5,500 person soccer stadium. I mean, this thing is, I could explain it to you, um, but in, until you see it for yourself and you drive through it and walk through it to see its capabilities, it's, um, it's going to benefit Mesa at every aspect, not just sports. Um, me, I just want to ask yeah. one question. What about what about the resiliency of the market? You know, you, nobody knows what the economy is going to do. Sure. Is, talk about the resiliency of this particular market segment for the country. Sure. And coming out of you know the the COVID c word, coming out of COVID, it was one of those things that sports kept kept the lights on. Uh, um, Luckily, you know, Arizona in part, but Mesa as a whole was one of the lucky cities that didn't have to close down. So we were getting things on loan that, you know, coming from Vegas and San Diego and Miami and things that, you know, places that were closed, field, they had no fields to go, where if we lost something, we could fill it. There was four people waiting for fields. There was, you know, five or six other rights holders begging for fields because they had three, 400 teams registered for an event that is now closed during COVID. So we were getting things on loan to keep our lights on and our hotels were thriving. You know, when a hotel thought that their market was, a, you know, BT and association and corporate, that went to a screeching halt, as David said. So uh, sports kept the lights on. And to come out of COVID and build a $320 million privately funded facility on 320 plus acres, that shows you how much sports really, it, I won't say it was unwavering, everything wavered during this, but it, it was that pivot is how do we keep going? How do we keep playing? Um, outdoor sports, golf, golf all of a sudden was, hey, this is the safest sport on the planet now. Amazing. Let's all pick up golf. So uh, <laughs> it was one of those things that it, it didn't, it slowed. And then it picked right back up when we realized what sports wasn't stopping. Right. And I think too, what's really important is that there's the the ancillary visitation, 
Sure. So, you know, you have the teams themselves that are booking, but then when you look at all of the ancillary bookings that are coming to view the particular sports, you know, whether it's family or fans or whatever it is, right. there's that, there's a, it's almost like a domino effect. Yeah. And so it's yeah. much more than what we can actually put on paper. And that's the perfect know? transition to what I was going to ask David about how, how is Belding Park going to affect his business? Because I feel like national sales, it's going to be such a great exposure venue. right from the Belding Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, one word uh, that uh, going into uh, 2020, everyone talked about the leisure market uh, where you extend your, uh, uh, your corporate event and then bleed into a leisure stay. Uh, I could see, you know, uh, that it's happening on the, on the sports side, and uh, what will, what Bell Park what Bell Park does for for Mesa is there are vendors that are coming in building that park. Mm -hmm. uh, there are corporations that are behind it, uh, and they will have to have a sales meeting. They will have to have an operational meeting, and they're already in the market. Uh, there's a large stake for them to uh, meet in the market. So we're hoping that will translate into future corporate meetings. Uh, we actually, uh, there's a potential where, you know, the, the, the turf is being laid down. Uh, I believe it's from Canada. So Canadians can come down and uh, do a sales meeting here um, in, the in the month of January. And we all know how uh, we love our Canadian snowbirds to come down. So there's definitely potential. There's also a potential of uh, parents just coming in, uh, CEO of, I'm just going to pick a company, Coke, his kid is playing at Bell Park. And then he's seeing what transformation Mesa is going through and then okay I want to actually bring a meeting here so we're hoping to uh, capitalize on that um, so we'll you know do marketing within the park and you know we'll uh, rely on our sales efforts to capture that whatever we can uh, from uh, those visitors uh, that are coming down and having their son playing soccer um, and it's location I mean right location. in the industrial park right yeah. next to the uh, airport I mean right that was yeah. not by accident so no. I mean, to your point, that's that's just kind of a, a domino effect. It was a trickle effect that yeah. all, it was a perfect location. Um, it goes right into your to your industry. It is, yeah. And uh, I believe there's two developments nearby. Uh, I believe they're focused service, but we're hoping again uh, that we'll see some uh, some of those full service hotels coming on, online too, where we can really make an impact as a destination marketing organization and then bringing groups, showing what's a, what, what, what is Mesa about, and then eventually having them book uh, in Mesa. Pretty exciting. It is. I mean, I, and I hate to leave out Cannon Beach, but that's a whole nother one that I, right. I wasn't really prepared to talk about, but you can, I'm sure that any one of you knows the same thing there. And, and we've talked about this too. Well, I think Cannon Beach is this like, again, kind of unheard of thing that Mesa got to earn as well. Um, yeah. it, being a surf park is so, such a niche thing that you didn't, you've never really heard of them. You've heard them maybe on the far west coast and the far east coast, uh, but it was, you know, not, not in Mesa. Desert for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so uh, while I think it'll be, you know, couple events here and there and have a very niche you know the uh, you know the surfing competitions and things like that it is going to affect her leisure market um, by leaps and bounds and where it's located um, is going to be huge for hotels to partner with and and package it together and when they come in you know here's a two-day pass and here's you know 10 passes for your whole team that's coming into play at Bell Bank or it's going to play at a city field that thing is just going to be it, it all it all makes sense like we said this full picture um, no, nothing stands alone. It all was a picture that was by design. It, it's like playing Tetris. All this fit together perfectly. Yeah. You know, and in addition, in addition to that too, is that the location of both of these sports complexes enable us to market on behalf of our partners. So Queen Creek is a partner, and they're right there on the border. So you know, there's and, and we have we have clients that we work with in Gilbert that it's just that close. So because the Cannon Beach is right on the border of Gilbert, so what this does is it enables us to really expand on the Mesa, Mesa City Limitless brand, yes. and just bring it all to us. And your footprint you know? just got so much bigger. Yeah. yeah. That's so real it's lucky. really, really, really important. Yeah, and of course, all How that important? info. Very important. <laughs> really important. And of course, all that info is going to be on our website. Um, but with that said, Kimberly. Yep. Um, so what new and innovative opportunities are there being added to the Visit Mesa website and the toolbox related to the website? Mm. It's so exciting and I wish that Kate were sitting next to me, but I'm going to have her back here. Um, I know that you will all have already um, you know, heard what Kate um, is talking about as it relates to the ultimate analytics for just about everything we're doing um, to reach out um, to the client. Um, but we have a couple of new things. Um, I'm in the process right now of negotiating an agreement where 
yes, Mark, we're going to be able to track. <laughs> Actually, when we're doing um, digital marketing, we'll have a new reservation system. We're going to be able to track the effective effectiveness of all of our campaigns through unique links um, on our website. Um, and we'll be able to actually um, know how much revenue is being coming, will be coming in, um, which hotels will be booked, um, how long people will be staying, where they're coming from. So it'll give us a totally different picture. And we also have a, um, a new resource where we can actually find where people are accessing our website that we didn't know before. So people are coming in for reasons that we didn't align with our target market. So we're actually looking at new and different personas that are visiting the website. And a perfect example is Lance and I are working on the PBR, which is the professional bull riders are coming in to Queen Creek. Lance is going to be able to book the hotel rooms. I'm going to be able to do print advertising in, in Cowboy Magazine. And then I'm also going to build a persona that will actually link on the website to drive hotel bookings. Now, the reservation system won't be set up by then, but at least it'll set a baseline for us. We also have um, engaged with Uber Media, which Kate has spoken about, but and Kate gets excited about the you know the technology of it. But I get excited about the psychology of it, so I can actually read people's minds and I can know where they go and what they do, so that we can actually communicate back to the city, which was one of the main focuses that they had was, how can you prove that what you're doing in market, I'm talking with my hands. I should, I'm supposed <laughs> to put, my mother said, put your hands in your lap. That's okay, sales. sorry, <laughs> that's a sales you're thing. In a group. I, I'm in a group, okay. Yeah. Um, um, to actually um, try to tell the city that our efforts are resulting in success and how we're tracking that. Um, and just one more thing that I want to say is that with the burgeoning um, short-term rental market, we actually have um, uh, companies put in place that are going to be able to give us real-time booking numbers um, for the short-term mm -hmm. rental, which is growing like crazy. Um, the short-term rental is actually bringing in almost twice the tax revenue that hotels are bringing in, and yet, the hotel business is not being cannibalized based on the the, uh, the information that we have. So it's just an additional way for us to track the communication through our digital marketing to those people that are staying in short-term rental. So it's really, really exciting, the different technologies that are coming to us. We also have a company that we're going to link through, and it's called Bandwango, and that's going to be more of an attraction-based um, analytic that will come to us, so we'll actually be able to know where people are spending money and we'll be able to sell tickets to certain events or create packages for people when they're in market. Um, there's a whole list of things that we're working on that is so exciting um, because the consumer is now ready to hear from us. Yeah. And we're right there to do it. And so. as analytical and big brother as that sounds, yes. like I know where you look and I know where I you know. spend it. it, it honestly is the I'm going to keep doing this because it's the full oh, picture. Well, I do this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of those <laughs> things where when you're more accurate in your marketing and you're more accurate in when and the why and the how much and the when, you get to, you, you can make, you know, a sporting event a full destination. You can make exactly. a, uh, you know, a corporate uh, association event a full experience. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're staying in this hotel, here's all the vendors that you can go to. Here's the restaurants nearby. Here is, you know, a site tour you can go to. Here is, you know, out on the, you can go outdoor kayaking if you want. Like, you just built an entire package and right. it was because of all of their interests and that's mm -hmm. huge for yeah. any market. Yep. And it's identifying Ultimately, that. we're going to be enhancing the visitor, the visitor's experience and that's kind of what we all are here to do, right? Like right. make it a better mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Um, so yeah, change in technologies, mm. change in the way that we do things, change in just all of the attractions. The product. And the product, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of bananas to think uh -huh. about maybe what it looked like five years ago mm -hmm. compared to what it's going to be in the next couple of years, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, so uh, what changed, I'll let you each answer this question and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Lance, I'll start with you. Um, what changes are you most excited about for 2022 in your department or just in Visit Mesa in general? Yeah, honestly, and um, it all, uh, it comes back to my market and sports, but seeing what downtown Mesa was, even since I got here, to what it's about to be in the next year. Um, the microbreweries, the, you know, adding more hotels, the, it's w what, what do they call it, the glow up of our downtown yes. Mesa? 
is huge because you know you build something like Bell Bank Park and you, you're building you know Cannon Beach, and um, you know having Benedictine University in in Mesa like those. Now we have a presence. So we we had you know a very heavy reliant youth market, and we knew that. And and the youth sports bring in a ton of funding and a ton of tourism, and we know that. Parents will pay any amount of money to make sure that their kid has the best nine-year-old soccer game they've ever been to, and which is huge. But knowing that we have that and we have that as a baseline, we can go after those big fish now. Now we're now we're armed to be able to go after the Olympic governing bodies. We have the the facilities now and the and the destination marketable to go after these big fish. To hey, that's not our once every four years. This is a once twice a year thing because we have the ability to do it. And that's most exciting for me is to be able to confidently walk into that room and say, hey, I have a destination that can absolutely house this and here's how we're gonna make it work. Um, and I don't, and I feel like coming into a market where you're unsure of that, the client knows that too. If you have any wavering, hey, this might not work, you're not an option for them anymore. We are absolutely an option because we absolutely have the facilities and the capabilities and the properties and the marketing and the media to do it. And that's what's most exciting for me in, in the change coming in the next year or so. Kimberly, what about you? You know, I, for me, I love the fact that we've got a restart button. To me, that is the most amazing thing that we've been blessed with. Um, we are starting on the same level and same platform as our competitors, depending on who you consider your, you know, your competitors to be. But even in the state of Arizona, um, we're starting fresh because there's been a void of 18 months of communication and engagement, and so when we're presenting our product, we're actually rebranding without knowing we're rebranding mm -hmm. because we're speaking to a different mindset. Um, the, as it relates to changes, I think that what Mark has done, and yes, he's standing in front of me, but I'm not <laughs> doing this because he's standing in front of me, is that he's actually created an environment where we have much more input with our, our stakeholders, um, with the people that live in Mesa, and I think that that's really, really important um, to get that message across. And that's part of the, the best part of the restart because I know from the marketing that my department is doing that it's going to be very, very visible. And I will say that the estimate of the return or the reignition of tourism in Mesa was very, very conservative. And what's happened is we have recovered and rebounded so much quicker than our competitive set that we have more funding to be really creative, to work on autism marketing, to do something for DEI, to do, to do the things that are, um, that are much deeper than the surface level. And so that's what I'm most excited about because we now have the funding that we didn't think we had to do more and to engage more with a broader set of visitors. So, yeah, very nice. Hmm? David, what about you? 2022. If I have to sum it up in one word, demand generators. Um, I think we forgot to talk about uh, ASU's uh, downtown school. Uh, Herberger Institute is coming to downtown and uh, that's going to change how downtown uh, itself is. It's already growing. We gain a lot of restaurants. Um, another demand generator would be downtown. Uh, that core is growing, uh, 30 plus restaurants, uh, shops and bars. Um, I think really Mesa is growing up, uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, of course, there are also demand generators we talked about already, Bell Park, uh, Bell, uh, uh, that, that, that will bring in uh, lots of eyes to look at Mesa. Um, excited about just having meaningful conversations again with meeting planners uh, that are ready to meet in person. Uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to in uh, 2022. And I would say what I'm looking for, not that anyone asked, but let's just pretend that you <laughs> <Allison>. asked. <laughs> um, I'm most excited about seeing the people come to our city and the money they are spending. And I can't wait to tell that story to our residents so that the residents really understand what an impact we make on their daily lives because of the money that's being spent in our city. And I think it's really important that our residents have an understanding of what we do and also stand behind us in everything that we want to do because we do have shared values with our community and really demonstrating that. Mm -hmm. Well, and those new, all of the new tools, the fun tools that we have yeah. will help us do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for taking a thank few moments to chat us. with thank me. Um, if you ever want to come have fun, the Lido deck is open nine to five. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.